Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. We got a little bit of free agency updates to get to y'all right here. These, or uh, I said, I should say these three stories are kind of uh, things that have built up over the course of the past week. Um, I'm sure you've already heard of some of them. Only about one of them happened today. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to sort of put them all together or group them all together for one video rather than do a video each on every single one. But as I'll say, we're going to talk about Evan Ingram. We're going to talk about the signing today of a tackle in Matt Gano, And we're going to talk about the Mr. Trubisky rumors. Let's start off with Evan Ingram first and foremost. Uh, this is from Ian Rappaport, a tweet. He says, a day after several tight ends got the franchise tags, one note, teams have been inquiring about Evan Ingram of the Giants as a slot wide receiver, as well as a tight end. They believe he's a matchup problem as a wide receiver, which adds to his value in free agency. Now, as Giants fans, we've all seen this story and heard this song before. Put Evan Ingram out at wide receiver. Let him be a mismatch that he is. Let him do work. We're short at wide receivers. I feel like... The amount of times we've heard that is same as the amount of times we've also heard, well, he's a mismatch at tight end. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a mismatch at wide receiver. He gets separation against, like, safeties, you know, against linebackers for sure, sometimes against safeties. I'm not sure if he's going to get separation against a cornerback that's that can keep up with, you know, the much faster wide receivers of the NFL. But this is good, still good for the Giants because... All signs point to Evan Ingram, you know, just in his free agency, leaving the New York Giants and going to sign with somebody else. And wholeheartedly, I do wish that man good luck in uh, whatever team he's with, whatever future endeavors he's going to go upon. Um, for those of you that don't know, in the new player style, which is, I, and I just want to say, I don't really like this, but, you know, it's the way of players showing basically either A, they want a pay raise, or B, they're done with their team. In this case, it's B because Ingram is a free agent. He changed his Twitter banner, which used to be Giants related, and he changed his Twitter profile picture, which used to be him in Giants uniform, and his bio is now like sparse of anything, any type of information, which used to contain, you know, New York Giants tight end or tight end for the New York Giants or something like that, which makes sense because technically he's not that right now as a free agent, but obviously if he wanted to come back or, you know, he thought there was a legitimate path to him being back with the Giants, he probably would have left it the same or, you know, waited until the, the last hour to change it where whatever he signs with whatever team. But this is still good for the Giants in the sense that the bigger of a contract that Ingram gets, and he's already kind of set out to get a good contract based of what we already saw in the tight end market. But the bigger contract he gets, that just means more and more of a possibility that we get a comp pick and a better comp pick at that. Let me talk to you guys about what Carolina did with Cam Thomas, their tight end, just a, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Let me read this out to you guys. It was Friday. They signed Ian Thomas, my bad. Let me correct myself. Not Cam Thomas, Ian Thomas, to a three-year, $16.5 million contract after a season where he only had 18 catches for 188 yards and no touchdowns in 17 games. Now, he is better known as a blocking tight end. But those stats, that production is definitely not nothing close to what Evan Ingram has managed to get over his course here with the Giants. And Ingram, of course, is known better as a receiving tight end. But you combine better production with the fact that teams might want to use him more as a wide receiver. That just means that he's going to get paid more because we all know the wide receiver position is definitely paid a little bit higher than the tight end position. So if you a guy like Ian Thomas got a contract like that, Evan Ingram, according to PFF, he is projected to get around a two-year $18 million contract with $10 million of a guaranteed. And I would guess that's a little bit on the lower side of things. I, I believe he could get more money than that, as crazy as it sounds. But all that means is that with that $18 million contract, that's around a fifth-round comp pick. He gets something better than that. Yeah, I fully believe we could get a third-round comp pick, which is the highest I think that a team could receive for a um you know a free agent player that or that left their team i think third round is the highest i fully believe we could get that i think there's a team out there that could potentially pay that much for Evan Ingram. of course i'm hoping it is the bills but they don't really need uh a tight end in my opinion they got dawson knox dawson knox is more than good enough but i think we could get a third round comp pick for this man in the 2023 draft and that would be really good because then i would be a little bit more happy about the fact that we didn't trade him when he, we had the chance to trade him 
him walking at this point is not necessarily him walking for nothing, right? So that's the Ingram news out of the way. Let's get right into the actual signing we had today. Offensive tackle, uh, Matt Gano. And I think I am pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but he is from the Atlanta Falcons. He was with the Atlanta Falcons for the past four years. Very young player. He was signed there as an undrafted free agent. Somebody that was looked at as a little bit of a project. Had some high upside to him. Only started around four games for the Falcons in his career. there, And I think all four of those games were in 2020. And then he has had a good amount of injury issues in his career as well. Now, right off the bat, I look at this as nothing but a depth signing. Um, I would be very shocked if this is, you know, our potential starter going into next season. And I'm sure a lot of Giants fans feel the same way. But what this is, of course, is once again depth. And along with just getting a legitimate starting offensive line, we need also reliable and legitimate depth. Now, because of the fact that uh, this guy has that high upside to him, maybe he could fulfill one of those two requirements that being a good depth piece reliable i'm not sure about because most of the time that he hasn't been on the field has be been because of his injuries and in fact uh because he underwent a surgery for an undisclosed injury he had to miss the entire 2021 season and after starting a couple games for the falcons in 2020 i would have to think that that injury was probably the last straw for them maybe they you know want to keep him a little bit more he was somebody that actually did like some work for them at one point but we shall see how that goes. According to Jeremy Fowler, he should be fully healthy now and he's ready to compete. Hey, he might not even make the team. No disrespect to Macano if he somehow crumbles across this video. But he might even just be a camp body. But at least the Giants are making moves to get more and more bodies in the offensive line room in the first place. Early on in uh, free agency rather than waiting last minute. Kind of like they did last year. And then of course, let us talk about Mitch Trubisky. This has been a rumor since before the offseason began basically actually no let me correct myself since joe shane signed here as our general manager of the new york giants because mr Trubisky, the former second overall pick of the chicago bears where it didn't work out with chicago was the backup quarterback to josh allen in buffalo last year and i just want to say for some reason him being that backup quarterback behind allen has really raised his stock in free agency a lot of teams are now being connected to him, not just the Giants, but a lot of teams are being connected to him, um, such as Washington as well. I've seen even Pittsburgh. And I'm just wondering, is sitting behind Josh Allen really that valuable? Um, you know, we all know Josh Allen's a great quarterback and whatnot, but I can't think of any other time where a QB has sat behind another QB and then all of a sudden they're looked at as a legitimate starting option. Now, of course, for the Giants, Trubisky would come in here to be, you know, pushing Daniel Jones to be competition to him and somebody that could legitimately take the starting job from him. And that would be basically a battle throughout the spring and summer. And whoever wins it, I assume, would start, um, which once again goes back. I've said this several times. I'm not sure how much fate I'm putting into the words that our GM and coach are saying, saying they're already completely behind DJ. Well, a move like bringing in Trubisky doesn't necessarily mean you're completely behind DJ. And I'm all for it. Do not misinterpret what I'm saying. What I hope doesn't happen, though, is that Mitch Trubisky goes out there in 2022, has, you know, a good year, whatever a good year is for Brian Dable and Joe Shane. But let's say he has a good enough year that we don't draft a quarterback or we don't look for an actual franchise QB. Because much like uh, Daniel Jones, Mitch Trubisky, he, they kind of both have very similar career paths. Uh, but Trubisky, I don't believe, can be a, um, a franchise quarterback. He can be a good quarterback on a good team or, or you know an average quarterback on a good team which is what he was in chicago i don't necessarily think he could take a team anywhere but once again for the competition for pushing daniel jones for lighting a fire under him i think 100 this will accomplish that and the rumors have only picked up after an interview which with uh mitch trubisky on a podcast and this is what he had to say he said i think of coach dable right away because of my connection with him in buffalo i'm excited to see what he does in new york really trubisky said on the adam Schefter podcast about the possibility of landing with the giants i don't know where i'm going to go but i know whatever he does there he's going to do a great job with that offense he's a great leader of men he's just real and authentic with all the guys and i think that's why so many people respected him in our building and I'm excited to see what he's going to do. And then, of course, you think of New York. You think of the city. I haven't been to New York that many times, but you think of the big 
you think of big New York City and the Giants. Also, I know Coach Dable will do a great job and excited to see that offense. Another reason, of course, is that we clearly needed a backup at the um, backup quarterback position. I, a upgrade at the backup quarterback position, I should say. Mike Glennon was not the guy. Jake Fromm was not the guy, no matter how much uh, Giants fans wanted to hype him up. Even if Trubisky comes in here and he doesn't take that starting job from Daniel Jones, DJ somehow holds him off and, you know, proves himself to be worthy of the starting position. Then we have, like the Bills did last year, probably the best backup quarterback in football. So I'm not worried at all for when Daniel inevitably goes out because it's almost an annual thing. Let's call it as it is, guys. He almost always goes out. No, not almost always. He always has gone out in each of his three years here, somewhere around two thirds into the season with some type of injury. So we're gonna need a good backup quarterback to you know, hold it down while he's gone. But that's it for now, guys. You put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think from Evan Ingram and the potential of a comp pick to the signing in Matt Gano, which I view as just depth, to all the Mr. Trubisky rumors, which we'll have to see if that happens. Because one thing I didn't even mention is cap space, but um, they're gonna free up $40 million one way or another, which means Mr. Trubisky will be a legitimate uh, option. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe. And I'm out.